poverty, inequality, and underdevelopment are the biggest challenges facing humanity. We are therefore determined that the BRICS partnership, which has been growing in importance and influence over the years, must be harnessed to drive an inclusive global economic recovery. Advancing the African agenda for us is a strategic priority as South Africa during its chairship of BRICS. It is for this reason that we have chosen as the theme for this year's summit, BRICS and Africa, a partnership for mutually accelerated growth, sustainability, and inclusive multilateralism. We welcome the ongoing engagement of BRICS countries with Africa in the spirit of partnership and mutual respect. We are pleased that all BRICS members, Brazil is re-engaging with the African continent in a meaningful way. Russia has always had really good and meaningful relations with African countries. China has chosen to assist and support Africa with its aspirations for development. And all of us, in the ways that we are involved and engaged, we want to be engaged with Africa. India continues to increase its engagement and its trade with Africa. So as the BRICS family, all of us as members, we are deeply invested and deeply engaged with Russia, with uh, Africa. Our objectives are reciprocal trade and investment. We want the goods and products and services from Africa to compete on an equal footing on the global economy. The African continental free trade area, once fully operational, will unlock the benefits of the continental market and generate mutually beneficial opportunities for both African and BRICS countries. As nations of the world confront the effects of climate change, we must ensure that the transition to a low carbon, climate resilient future is just, it must be fair, and it must be able to take into account the different circumstances that prevail in all countries. In line with this objective, BRICS nations need to advance the interests of the Global South and call for industrialized countries to honor their commitments to support climate actions by developing economic progress. The commitments of support that have been made, that have not yet been lived up to, need to be followed through. Peace and stability are preconditions for a better, more equitable world. We are deeply concerned about conflicts across the world that continue to cause a great deal of suffering and hardship to many people around the world. As South Africa, our position remains that diplomacy, dialogue, negotiation, and adherence to the principles of the United Nations Charter are necessary for the peaceful and just resolution of conflicts. We are concerned that the global financial and payment systems are increasingly being used as instruments of geopolitical contestation. Global economic recovery relies on predictable global 
payment systems and the smooth operating of banking, supply chains, trade, tourism, as well as financial flows. We will continue discussions on practical measures to facilitate trade and investment flows through the increased use of local currencies. This is a matter we believe that further discussions need to take place, particularly amongst our finance ministers. The world is changing. New economic, political, social, and technological realities for greater cooperation between nations is essential. New realities call for a fundamental reform of the institutions of global governance so that they may be more representative and better able to respond to the challenges that confront humanity. While many believe that we should advance the interests of all people, we believe that yes, as we advance them, the interests of the global south, that we as BRICS want to be ready to advance are essential and in this regard we want to collaborate more, to cooperate more with all countries that aspire to create a more inclusive international order. We are confident that this 15th BRICS summit will advance the cause of common prosperity and progress. We are confident that this 15th BRICS summit will in the end enrich and inspire our work towards the achievement of a much more humane global community. This is what BRICS is all about. This is what BRICS is committed to achieving. It is a great honor for us as South Africa to have this opportunity to host this 15th BRICS Summit and to have in our presence the BRICS members as they are represented here. And with those words, I open this session and then call upon, call upon one of the young leaders of our country who is also going to have an opportunity to give the words of welcome but also to give the hope that young people in the BRICS countries hope to communicate to all of us. I call upon Ms. Asanda Luaka to speak to us. She is the chairperson of the Board of Directors of the National Youth Development Agency that seeks to advance the interests of young people in South Africa. Ms. Ayanda. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, President. Your Excellencies and the Excellencies, the Heads of States of the BRICS countries, Ministers and Deputy Ministers present, members of the media, leaders of business, civil society and labor, young people. It gives me great pleasure to deliver a statement on behalf of young people to the BRICS Heads of State Summit. Young people make up a large proportion of the populations of each of our respective countries. Their voices and views are critical as we forge a post-pandemic society at the highest decision-making forums. I must recognize the efforts of the organizers in ensuring that young people are represented at this particular summit. Your Excellencies, from the 18th till the 20th of July, young people from BRICS countries converged in Durban, KwaZulu-Natal for the 9th BRICS Youth Summit and the first in person since the pandemic. The summit was convened under the theme BRICS and Africa, Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development 
and inclusive multilateralism to discuss the current state and future prospects for the development of youth cooperation in BRICS countries over a wide range of areas. As we have entered into the decade of action of the Sustainable Development Goals, we believe that BRICS countries in general, and young people in particular, should use their collective strengths to prioritize the development paradigm, using it as a guiding principle for our work as we continue intra-BRICS cooperation across areas such as trade, education, skills development and training, economic participation and transformation, health and well-being, and social cohesion. Your Excellencies, young people in their collective believe that youth are the present and the future, and our interactions as BRICS member states cannot and should not be limited to, annuals, to an annual summit, which is why at our ninth Youth Summit, we presented the draft framework for the establishment of a BRICS Youth Council which will become the coordinating body for youth development between BRICS member countries and will join formations such as the BRICS Business Council, BRICS Women's Alliance, and the New Development Bank. More importantly, the Youth Council will be a historic achievement for young people across our BRICS member states. Since the summit, leaders of youth agencies have met on three occasions to consider the draft declaration and framework of the BRICS Youth Council. And we are pleased to inform this summit that we have reached consensus on the establishment of a youth council. This will allow us to ensure deeper and stronger collaboration amongst young people. We thus implore that this summit endorse our proposal for the establishment of the BRICS Youth Council in its final declaration in ensuring that new pathways for positive change and innovation can be realized. And in doing so, will further ensure that no young person amongst the BRICS member states gets left behind. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ayanda Luaka, for bringing the youth voice in the BRICS summit. Your proposals, indeed, are very clear and comprehensive, and uh, we will be responding to that. It now gives me pleasure to ask His Excellency President Luis Lula da Silva President of the Federative Republic of Brazil to take the floor. Meu caro My dear President of the Republic of South Africa, President Ramaphosa, my dear President Vladimir Putin, President, Vladimir Putin, President, of, the Federal President Russia, of the Russian Federation, here represented by Lavrov. Foreign Affairs Minister Lavrov, Meu caro Nerendra Modi, primeiro ministro da República da Índia. Prime Minister Modi of India. Meu caro Xi Jinping, presidente da República Popular da China. President of the People's Republic of China. Minha querida and my dear companheira sister, Dilma Rousseff. Dilma Rousseff. Presidente do novo CEO banco de of the New Development Bank. Ministro do Estado do Brasil State que me acompanha, Brazil, Mauro Vieira, Relações Vieira, Internacionais, Fernando Haddad, Fernando Haddad Finance, Daniel Ministro do Brasil, Daniel Franco, for racial equality, Ambassador Celso Maria, Special International Advisor of the President, esposa, and my dear wife, Janja. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Business Forum of the BRICS, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Women's Entrepreneur Alliance, and Madam Lubovac, representative of the Business Alliance of Women of BRICS, and the youth member, Sandra Luaka. Dear friends, é uma alegria retornar it's a great joy to come back to Johannesburg, the city that was a very important stage of struggle against apartheid and that continues to inspire us to fight all forms of discrimination and inequality. 
The last time that I participated in this summit meeting, 2010, I had the honor to host in Brazil, our capital, the heads of state and government of Russia, India and China, besides South Africa, that participated as a candidate to become a member of the BRICS. Only one year after that meeting, we confirmed that South Africa would join the BRICS in the first expansion of our grouping. Its inclusion made that we could ref better reflect the new configuration of the world power. We left that meeting strengthened. Today we represent 41% of the world population and we are responsible for 31% of the global GDP in terms of purchasing power parity. But we face a more complex scenario than when we met for the very first time. In few years, we went back from a benign multi-polarity juncture to going back to an absolute mindset of Cold War and geopolitical competition. This is a lack of the senses that generates great uncertainty and corrodes multilateralism. We know very where this path could take us. The world needs to understand the risks that are involved and which are unacceptable for humanity. The BRICS uh, uh, we should say that all suffer the consequences of the war. The most vulnerable population in the developing countries are the ones that are hit more in an unproportional way. The Ukraine war shows the limitations of the UN Security Council. Many other conflicts and crises do not have the same attention. And the BRICS is a forum to discuss the main issues that affect peace and world security, we cannot bypass the treat. The main conflict of today that is happening in Ukraine that has global effects, Brazil has an historical position in the defense of the sovereignty and integrity of the territory and of all the principles that are followed by the UN. We believe that it is positive that a growing number of countries, amongst them the BRICS countries, also are engaged in direct contact with Moscow and with Kiev. We do not underestimate the difficulties to reach peace. And either we can be indifferent to the deaths and the destruction that increase every day. Brazil does not contemplate unilateral formulas for peace. We are ready to join efforts that we can effectively contribute for immediate ceasefire and a fair and everlasting peace. Everybody suffers with the consequences of the war. The most vulnerable population in the developing countries are the ones that are reached in an unproportional way. The Ukraine war shows the limitations of the UN Security Council. Many other conflicts and crises do not receive the due attention, even using, uh, even causing a vast suffering for their peoples. Haitians, Yemenites, Syrians, Libyans, and Sudanese and Palestinians all deserve to live in peace. It is unacceptable that mili global military spending in one year goes beyond two trillion dollars, while the FAO says to us that 735 million people are in hunger every day in the world. The quest for peace is a collective obligation and an imperative for a fair development and sustainable development. The BRICS should act as a force for understanding and for cooperation. Our willingness is expressed in the contributions given by China, South Africa, and from my own country in all the endeavors to a conflict resolution in Ukraine. There are many places where men go to war. The women are the ones that fight for conciliation. The valuation and the strengthening of the role of women in the resolution of conflicts will be more and more central for peace in the world. And more than that, the women's empowerment is a precondition for a full social economic development. And paraphrasing Thomas Sankara, a great pan-African leader 
Não which says we cannot hope for a society where half of the population is silenced by male chauvinism and by discrimination in political participation and in the world of labor. Dear friends, the weakening of the global governance is also clear in the development agendas, in financing, and in the confrontation with climate change. When I came back to the presidency of Brazil, I was very sad to see that the implementation of the 2030 agenda is under risk in all the world. A recent report from the UN indicates that we're in a strong backwardness. We see the greatest increase of inequality between the countries in more than the last three decades. In 30% of the goals, we stagnated or we're going backwards. It's very difficult to fight climate change, while many developing countries still have to deal with hunger, poverty, and other kinds of violence. The principle of common and shared responsibility, but differentiated, keep is something that is true till today. The major response for the carbon emissions that caused for climate change were those countries that made their industrial revolution and feeded predatory colonial extractivism. They have an historical debt with the planet Earth and with humanity. We need to value the Paris Agreement and the Climate Convention instead of outsourcing climate responsibilities for the global south. Brazil is recovering its protagonism on the environmental agenda. The coordination with other, country, with other developing countries that carry tropical forests to act as the climate change copes and biodiversity copes will be vital to give way to our interests. In the summit meeting in the Amazon rainforest that was held some days ago was a landmark for the necessary construction of a sustainable development model with more fairness. Our resources should not be exploited for the benefit of few, but valued and placed to service all, and above all, for the well-being of the local populations. And more than that, so that the promises that were already done by the rich countries should be fulfilled, climate financing and biodiversity should be truly new and additional in relationship to the traditional financial to development. We need an international financial system that instead of feeding the inequalities should help the medium and low income countries to implement structural changes. This will only happen with an adequate representation of the Bretton Woods institutions and their climatic funds. Foreign indebtedness refrains sustainable development. It's it's inadmissible that the developing country should be penalized with interest rates that are eight times higher than the ones that are charged in the rich countries. It is necessary to increase liquidity to enhance concessional financing and, last but not the least, the conditionalities. The trade multilateral system should be reactivated so it can come back and act as a tool for fair trade, predictable, equitable, and non-discriminatory. No one anymore remembers the development round of the WTO. The decarbonization of our economies should be followed by the job creation with dignity, industrialization, and green infrastructure and public services for all. Through the new development bank, we can offer our own alternatives for adequate financing that will attend or meet the needs of the South, global South. I'm sure that under the leadership of my sister, Dilma Rousseff, the bank will uh, manage to face these challenges. The creation of a common valid unit for our trade transactions and investments for the BRICS countries will increase our payment options and reduce our vulnerabilities. Uh, presidents, 
Uh, today, uh, yes, today the BRICS are fully consolidated as a brand and uh, as a political asset of strategic value. The participation of dozens of heads of government and state tomorrow in the enhanced uh, session will represent an historical landmark. The interest of many countries to join the BRICS is the recognition of its growing relevance. And also, we will have a troika at the G20 as members of the BRICS in the period 2023. And so it's another opportunity for us to make advancement of the concerns of the global south with the inequalities and with sustainable development. That the momentum that motivated the creation of BRICS 15 years ago continue to inspire us in building a multipolar, fair and inclusive international order. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, President Lula da Silva, for taking us down memory lane, particularly in, rela in relation to the composition of the BRICS family. You relate to us how, for instance, South Africa attended as a candidate member and thereafter was added to BRICS as a member, and that in itself strengthened the BRICS family. We once again stand at another momentous moment when more than 20 other countries are seeking to be part of the BRICS family, and I know that as BRICS leaders, you are discussing this matter and giving close attention to it, and you will know, need to make your decisions known. Your commitment to contribute to achieving a peaceful world, something that is appreciated, and your other views that you expressed are also most appreciated. The empowerment of women is something that has a great deal of resonance with most of us here, as are your views on climate change and how the resources of various countries should be used for the benefit of all. So thank you very much for your remarks in that regard. It is now my pleasure to ask President Vladimir Putin to have his moment to speak. He'll be participating through the virtual platform. Thanks a lot. President Ramaphosa. Distinguished President, distinguished Prime Minister Modi, President Xi, dear colleagues, at the outset, I would like to thank South African friends for what they have done during their presidency, during their chairmanship this year. The colleagues before me have already given positive assessment of the peace activities. And in general, certainly we share this assessment. Our group of five countries has rightly proved to be a credible entity on the global arena with ever-growing influence in global affairs. The strategic course of BRICS is aimed at the future, and it meets the aspirations of the main part of the international community, the so-called global majority by acting in concert on the principles of equality, partnership, support, and account for each other's interests, we deal with the most pressing issues of global and regional agenda. The main important thing is that BRICS stands for a multiple world order that is equitable and built on international law and 
the principles of the United Nations Charter, including respect for the right of every people to its own development path. Some countries promote their hegemony, exceptionality, and the policy of the ongoing colonialism and neocolonialism. I would like to note that the aspiration to preserve their hegemony in the world led to a dire crisis in Ukraine, at first with the help of Western countries, an anti-constitutional coup d'etat or spirit out in this country. After that, those people who did not agree with this coup faced a war. A war was unleashed against them, a war of attrition, and it lasted for eight years. Russia decided to support people that fight for their culture, for their traditions, for their language and their future. Our actions in Ukraine are guided by only one thing, to put an end to the war that was unleashed by the West against people in Donbass. We thank our colleagues, even BRICS, that take an active part in the attempts to put an end to this situation and to ensure just settlement by peaceful means. Dear colleagues, the main thing is that we unanimously stand for the shaping of a multipolar world order which is genuinely equitable and which is building on international law. The BRICS countries are building up on their potential. As was said, the BRICS countries are home to over 3 billion persons and their share in global GDP as per purchasing power parity of the so-called G7. Over the past decades, BRICS investment to global economy have doubled and the cumulative exports reached 20 percent of the overall indicator, we are successfully implementing the strategy for BRICS Economic Partnership 2025. Namely, we are strengthening the bilateral cooperation on such areas as diversification of supply chains, de-dollarization and transfer to local currencies in our mutual settlements, digital economy, support for small and medium enterprises, just transfer technologies, and naturally, the active part in this process is, is played by the business community. A great deal of effort is invested within the BRICS Business Council and the BRICS Women's Business Alliance that the host of our meeting, President Ramaphosa, indicated. The leaders of these organizations are present at this meeting. An important priority for the BRICS interaction is the establishment of new sustainable safe transport routes. In my address to the BRICS Business Forum, I talked about the importance of a speedy development of transcontinental routes, such as the North-South Corridor, that would link Russian northern sea and Baltic ports, to sea terminals in the Gulf and in the Indian Ocean. In the future, it would ensure the annual transit of up to 30 million tons of cargo. We believe that it is high time to establish a BRICS permanent commission on transport that would deal not only with the North-South project, but in broader terms, it would deal with logistics and transport corridors development, both interregional and global ones. Should the partners agree to that, the Russian side could work on this idea within its chairmanship in 2024. And certainly, we welcome strengthened interaction within BRICS.
in terms of global innovations. We look forward to a more active cooperation within the BRICS Global Research Advanced Infrastructure Network. It could be supported and developed by the Special Trust Fund. For its part, Russia is ready to share its experience and best practices, including when it comes to digital transformation and the use of artificial intelligence. We also seek to actively participate in the implementation of the Chief Arrangements on the establishment of the Joint Working Group on Nuclear Medicine. We seek to swiftly switch to practice the work of the BRICS TBET Cooperation Alliance. We wholeheartedly support the proposal of South African colleagues to organize a separate ministerial on women affairs. Their role in political, economic and social life of our states should definitely be enhanced. Dear colleagues, next year, Russia will assume BRICS chairmanship. Our chairmanship will have the following motto, strengthening multilateralism for just global development and security. We plan to have some 200 political, economic and public events that will be hosted by over dozen Russian cities. At the same time, the BRICS summit is scheduled for October 2024. It will take place in the city of Kazan. The specific dates will be agreed upon with colleagues by diplomatic channels. We will also have events in the format that has proved its relevance. I'm talking about BRICS Plus and BRICS outreach. During our chairmanship, we would like to do our utmost to efficiently facilitate the implementation of decisions adopted at this summit, including with regard to the expansion of BRICS. We will coordinate closely with partners on foreign policy matters. We will jointly work on key international platforms, primarily within the United Nations. We will continue regular meetings of BRICS national security advisors. Certainly, we will prioritize such urgent tasks as combating terrorism and the spread of terrorist ideology, as well as combating money laundering and return of assets gained by criminal means. By the way, we thank partners for their support within the Financial Action Task Force. We hope that we will keep the such spirit of solidarity in the future. We will contribute to comprehensive implementation of the strategy for BRICS Economic Partnership 2025 and the development of new long-term guidelines for cooperation. This includes in our view, increasing the role of states and international monetary and financial system, the development of interbank cooperation, expanding the use of local currencies and deepening interactions between tax, customs and anti-monopoly agencies. Naturally, Russian priorities include bolstered partnerships in science and innovation, health care, education, the development of humanitarian ties in general, cultural and civilizational diversity, is one of the pillars of the new multiple world order, and it means the establishment of integral free space for cultural exchange, art, and creativity. As we see it, it's high time for partners within BRICS, as well as the SEO and the community of independent states and other countries to have a serious conversation on the future of culture in the world on preserving and multiplying global cultural heritage. By the way, such dialogue could be held within the 9th International Cultural Forum, which is scheduled to take place in the city of St. Petersburg from November 16th to 18th. And certainly, Russia will continue to contribute to contacts in sports and youth exchanges, namely in June 2024. We plan to have the BRICS Games. We will be happy to welcome teams from the BRICS nations at the next year's international competition, the Games of the Future, they will take place in the city of Kazan. This is a mix of uh, 
видео и Dynamic Sports and Popular Video Games and Technological Devices. A good opportunity for contacts and friendly talks will be given by the World Youth Festival that will take place in March next year in the city of Sochi. In conclusion, let me once again highlight that Russia during its chairmanship will interact in the most constructive way with BRICS partners in order to further enhance the role and credibility of BRICS. Without any doubt, this credibility will only grow. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, President Putin, for your input in this regard. You're absolutely right that uh, BRICS has proven itself to be a credible entity that acts in solidarity, that seeks to promote a more equitable global system. And we thank you also for the recognition of the efforts that are being made by a number of BRICS countries to bring about a peaceful end uh, to the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. We agree that in the end, this type of conflict is best brought about to, to an end by negotiation which you have said you have always been ready for. The BRICS members will continue to be supportive of various efforts to bring this conflict to an end through dialogue, mediation, and negotiation. And thank you for your thoughts also about the support that needs to be given to small medium enterprises that is appreciated and the women empowerment process that needs to be enhanced that too we truly appreciate and you've made comments about the reform of international financial systems that too is a matter that the BRICS needs to be seized with and the BRICS leaders in retreat yesterday did talk about this and an announcement in this regard will be finalized and you, the cultural advancement culminating in the BRICS games is something that also has a great deal of resonance amongst the BRICS leaders. So thank you very much indeed. It now gives me pleasure to ask his, the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of the Republic of India, to take the podium. Prime Minister. Excellency. Excellency. Rashtrapati Ramaphosa. President Ramaphosa. Excellency, Excellency, Lula da Silva, President Lula da Silva, Excellency, Rashtrapati Putin, Excellency, President Putin, Excellency, Rashtrapati Xi, Excellency, President Xi, Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, Pandrave Briggs Summit ke bhabbe aujan, my or hamare aatikya sattar ke liye. And thanks once Mitra again to my dear friend, President Ramaphosa, bahut, bahut for the hai. wonderful arrangements made for the organization of the 15th BRICS Summit and for his aana. hospitality. It is Mere a great pleasure liye. for me. Eu, eu prazer para mim. This is a यहां से कुछ दूर ही टॉलस्टॉय फार्म है जिसका निर्माण महात्मा गांधी ने 
इस यात्रा में हम अनेक हमारा न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक ग्लोबल साउथ के देशों के विकास में एन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा रहा है। डेवलपमेंट ऑफ़ द कंट्रीज़ ऑफ़ द ग्लोबल साउथ। कंटिन्यूंसी रिजर्व अरेंजमेंट्स के माध्यम से हमने फाइनेंशियल सेफ्टी नेट का निर्माण किया। हमने फाइनेंशियल सेफ्टी नेट का निर्माण किया। हमने फाइनेंशियल सेफ्टी नेट का � through initiatives such as the BRIC satellite constellation, the vaccine R&D center, mutual recognition of pharma products, we are bringing about positive changes in the lives of ordinary citizens in BRICS countries. Uh, through initiatives such as the Think Youth Tank Summit, Council, BRICS Games, the Think Tanks Council, we are strengthening people-to-people people people ties between all countries. In order to give the BRICS agenda new direction, India has given some MSMS suggestions such as the Railway Research Online Network, the online BRICS database, close cooperation between MSMEs and a startup forum. I am pleased that significant progress has been made in all these areas. Excellencies, in order to further expand our close cooperation, I would like to place before you a few suggestions. The first is cooperation in the area of space. We have already been working on a BRIC satellite constellation. Taking a step forward, we can think about creating a BRIC space exploration consortium. Under this, we can work on areas such as space research and weather monitoring for global good. My second suggestion is cooperation in the areas of education, skill development and technology. In order to make BRICS a future-ready organization, we must make our societies future-ready. Technology can play an important role in this regard. In order to provide access to education for children living in remote and rural areas in India, we have created the Diksha platform that is digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. At the same time, in order to promote innovation among school children, we have created 10,000 Atal tinkering labs across the country in order to remove language barriers and AI-based language platform Bhashini is being used. The COVID platform has been made to manage vaccination through our digital public infrastructure, that is the India stack. Public service delivery is being revolutionized. Diversity is one of India's greatest strengths. The solution to any problem found in India has withstood the test of this diversity. And therefore, these solutions can easily be implemented in any part of the world. In this regard, we will be pleased to share with BRICS partners all these platforms developed in India. My third suggestion is that in order to identify each other's strengths, uh, we can carry out together a skills mapping exercise 
through this, we can complement each other in the development journey. My fourth suggestion relates to big cats. In all five BRICS countries, various species of big cats can be found in large numbers. Under the International Big Cat Alliance, we can make joint efforts for their protection. My fifth suggestion relates to traditional medicine. All our countries have traditional medicine ecosystems. Can we together create a repository of traditional medicine excellencies, excellencies. under South Africa's global presidency South countries of the global south have been given special importance in BRICS. we heartily welcome this this, this is not just an expectation of the present times but a necessity as well under its G20 presidency India has given this subject the highest priority Based one family, on our one core value, one earth, one family, one future, we are making efforts to move forward together with all countries. In the Voice, Voice of, of Global, Global South, South Summit, summit organized in January earlier this year, 125 countries participated and shared their concerns and priorities. We have also proposed permanent membership for the African Union in the G20. I am confident that all BRIC partners are also together in the G20 and that all will support our proposal giving a special place to all these efforts within BRICS as well will further boost the morale of countries of the Global South. Excellencies, India fully supports the expansion of BRICS membership and we welcome moving forward on this based on consensus. In 2016, during India's presidency, we had defined BRICS as a group inclusive building responsive, and collective inclusive and collective solutions. Seven years later, we can say BRICS will be that BRICS will be breaking barriers, breaking barriers revitalizing, revitalizing economies, economies inspiring, inspiring innovation, creating opportunities, creating opportunities and shaping, and the, shaping future. the future. Hum sabhi Together with all BRICS partners, we will continue to contribute actively to make this new definition meaningful. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister Modi, for your very insightful remarks would like to particularly thank you as South Africa for reminding us of the journey that Mahatma Gandhi started here in South Africa and what he imparted to our forebears in South Africa in the modes of struggle. He was one who was strong on resistance. He taught us passive resistance, which he perfected and we escalated to various acts of boycotts against the apartheid system. And through that, we were able to encourage citizen activism and organizations that were involved in our struggle, like the African National Congress and others, mobilized our people to fight against apartheid and finally to defeat it. So Mahatma Gandhi played a very important role in the history of South Africa. Thank you for reminding us. Would like to congratulate India particularly as you speak about the need for cooperation in space 
in a few hours, India's spacecraft Chandrayaan-3 will be landing on the moon. We congratulate you. This, for us as the BRICS family, is a momentous occasion, and we rejoice with you. We join you in the joy of this great achievement. But we also thank you for making the proposal that there should perhaps be a BRICS space cooperation system, which can be looked at it's a very forward-looking proposal. And your proposals on the development of skills is something that we appreciate and has a great support amongst all of us. And thank you very much for also mentioning the issue about big cats. We were pleased as South Africa to donate cheetahs to India, and you informed me that the cheetahs arrived well and they are alive in India. And I told you that we are willing and prepared to donate even more because you are a country that takes care of uh, big cats. Uh, so we thank you for that. So should you need more cheetahs, you've come to the home of cheetahs. <laughs> On the issue of traditional medicines repository, we have a very big community of people who are involved in traditional medicine here in South Africa. So we're willing to cooperate and I'm sure the same obtains with all other members of BRICS and uh, this you will find uh, great support for amongst all of us to create a traditional medicines repository. So that would be good to heal all the ailments. We should not just continue being dependent on Western uh, medicines. We should be also dependent on our own traditional medicines. We appreciate your focus on the Global South and also for having had this meeting of 125 countries participating. The Global South should now continue to be our area of focus, and we appreciate that. We want to wish you well as you continue to prepare to host the G20 Summit, at which you have invited us, and we will surely participate. And uh, we are heartened to hear that India supports the expansion of BRICS. This is a matter that we are discussing, and hopefully we will find a clear solution to this matter as we discuss it amongst ourselves as BRICS leaders. So we thank you very much. My honor now to call on His Excellency President Xi Jinping, to take the floor and address us. President Xi Jinping. Your Excellency, President Cyril Ramaphosa. Your Excellency, President Lula da Silva. Your Excellency, President Vladimir Putin. Your Excellency, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We gather at a time when the world is undergoing major shifts, division, and regrouping. It has entered a new period of turbulence and transformation. We, the British countries, should always bear in mind our founding purpose of strengthening ourselves through unity, act on a strong sense of responsibility, enhance cooperation across the board, and promote high-quality life so as to bring to the world more certainty, stability, and a positive energy. 
We should deepen business and financial cooperation to boost economic growth. Development is an inalienable right of all countries. It is not a privilege reserved for a few. The world economic recovery remains shaky. With less than 3% growth for the year, as estimated by some international institutions, challenges for developing countries are even more formidable, hampering their efforts to realize the sustainable development goals. We Brits and Poles should be fellow companions on the journey of development and revitalization and oppose decoupling and supply chain disruption, as well as economic coercion. We should focus on practical cooperation, particularly in such fields as digital economy, green development, and supply chain, and bolster economic, trade, and financial exchanges. China will set up a China BRIC Science and Innovation Incubation Park to support the deployment of innovation results. Under the BRIC's Remote Sensing Satellite Constellation Mechanism, we will explore the establishment of a BRIC's Global Remote Sensing Satellite Data and Application Cooperation Platform to provide data support for agriculture, ecological conservation, and disaster reduction in various countries. China will also work with all parties to jointly establish the BRICS framework on industrial cooperation for sustainable development as a platform of industrial coordination and project cooperation in implementing the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We should expand political and security cooperation to uphold peace and tranquility. The Cold War mentality is still haunting our world, and the geopolitical situation is getting intense. BRICS countries should keep to the direction of peace cooperation and consolidate the BRICS strategic partnership. We need to make good use of the BRICS foreign ministers' meeting, the meeting of high representatives on national security and other mechanisms. Support each other on issues concerning our respective interests and enhance coordination on major international and regional issues. We need to tender good offices on the hotspot issues, pushing for political safety and lowering the temperature. Artificial intelligence is a new field. Artificial intelligence has influenced the development. It may generate enormous development dividends, but also harbors risks and challenges. Our five countries have agreed to launch the AI study group of BRICS Institute Venture Networks at an early date. We need to enable the study group to play its own role, further expand cooperation on AI, and step up information exchange and technological cooperation. We need to jointly fend off risks and develop AI governance frameworks and standards for intelligence. So as to make AI technologies more secure, reliable, controllable, and equitable. We should increase people-to-people exchanges and promote mutual learning between civilizations. There are many civilizations and developments in the world.
应有的样子。人类历史不会终结于一种文明、一种制度。Or system. Chinese countries need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the Great Countries. Need to champion the values of the 要用好金砖国家治国理政研讨会、人文交流论坛、女性创新大赛等机制，深化人文交流，增进民心相通。中方提议。金砖国家拓展教育领域合作，发挥好。职业教育联盟作为，探索建立数字教育合作机制，打造全方位教育合作格局，同时加强传统文化交流，促进优秀传统文化传承和创新。We should uphold fairness and justice, and improve global governance. Strengthening global governance is the choice if the international community intends to share development opportunities and tackle global Rather than dictated by those with the strongest muscles, the loudest voice, gangling up to form exclusive groups and packaging their own rules as international norms are even more unacceptable. BRICS countries should practice true multilateralism. 维护以联合国为核心的国际体系。支持并加强以世贸组织为核心的多边贸易体制，反对小圈子、小集团。要充分发挥新开发银行的作用，推动国际金融货币体系改革，提升发展中国家的代表性和发言权。我高兴地看到。发展中国家参与金砖合作的热情高涨，很多发展中国家申请加入金砖合作机制。我们要用好金砖加合作，加速扩员进程，让更多国家加入到金砖大家庭，积众志。So as to pull our strengths, pull our strengths to make global governance and equitable. Colleagues, as an ancient Chinese saying goes, designs for justice prevail, and acts for the benefit of the people succeed. The cause of BRICS champions international justice and benefits the people of our five countries. It will grow steadily and strong and make greater contributions to world peace and development. Thank you. Thank you, President Xi Jinping for those insightful words. Yes, indeed, the world has entered a new period of turbulence, and you call upon BRICS to play an important role, notwithstanding this turbulence that the world is going through, and that the BRICS family should remain united 
but more importantly should be ready to play a key role in helping to stabilize the world. And you mentioned a very important point about development, that it is not a privilege of a few. Development should be spread around so that all can benefit. And you mentioned a number of areas in which there should be development in science, technological advancement, in innovation, and we thank you also for the offer to set up a BRICS remote data center that will help to advance the technological and innovative capability of BRICS countries, as well as developing a framework for implementing the SDGs. We thank you for that. And uh, much as you say, the Cold War mentality continues to haunt the world, that the BRICS countries should stand on the side of peace. I think we support that, and we support the message you put forward that we should support each other on our core interests, the areas that each, of one, each one of us in BRICS focus on and artificial intelligence is a new frontier that we need to focus on, but we should also have governance of artificial intelligence, and it should be reliable and secure. And another important aspect is the people-to-people -people contact uh, that we should underpin our unity in the BRICS around and that there should be respect for the modernization paths that countries have opted for. So we thank you for that. And there should not be ideological competition. This is the calling card for BRICS countries. Empowerment of women and also must promote traditional cultures. That too, we should say we appreciate. And yes, President Xi, you are in full support of the expansion of BRICS, as has been articulated by all BRICS members, that we stand at the cusp of expanding the BRICS family, because it is through this expansion that we will be able to have a much stronger BRICS in these turbulent times that we live in. So we await the decision that will be taken by the BRICS leaders in this regard uh, in due course as we go on with our summit. We've now reached a stage where we now want to give the media an opportunity, as they often ask for, that once they've done quite a bit of work, they want to go and rest. So we want to give the media an opportunity to go and rest. I don't know what they do when they go to rest, whether they have a siesta or whether they go and have tea, but we want to give them that opportunity. But they can be rest assured we will continue with our work uh, because we are committed to doing so. We are mindful of their wishes and their interests, so we will pause for a while and give them an opportunity to leave us to go and rest and then we will continue with our meeting. So we pause just for a while to allow the media to go and do what they do best when they have an opportunity to be uh, resting. So media people, thank you very much for being here. You may take your leave.